If you're a tech nerd, you know how it is. After you get a hold of the new hotness, going back to the old and busted feels especially meh. But the new Samsung Galaxy S8 runs all the way up to 850 bucks, which makes last year's leftovers a little more appetizing. Should you still buy one? Let's find out. I'm Mr. Mobile, and this is the Galaxy S7 Review Redo. This video is brought to you by Mint Sim. Stay till the end to learn how to get unlimited calls, texts, and 10 gigs of LTE starting at 20 bucks a month. The Galaxy S7 was one of the first smartphones I reviewed as Mr. Mobile, and for a time I called it the best Android phone you could buy. And a lot of the things that made the S7 special back then still hold up today. The smaller version is basically the perfect size for one-handed use, and the S7 Edge compensates for its added bulk with a larger screen, a bigger battery, and lines that can only be described as sensuous. While I think the S8 has the better hand feel, if you told me you thought the S7 Edge was the prettier phone, I'm not sure I'd be able to disagree with you. Aesthetics aside, it's probably the S7's camera that's aged the best. Last year, Android Central ran a huge blind comparison, asking readers to judge which photos they liked best without disclosing which phone took them. And the Galaxy S7 came out on top by a wide margin. That's not to say it's the most accurate camera, not at all. In fact, Samsung seems to have cranked up saturation and sharpness to give it some artificial pop. But hey, it's giving the users what they want, at least in the Android Central audience. That includes me, tacky bastard I am. Whenever I need a smartphone for some quick and dirty shooting, it's usually the S7 Edge doing the work. Also, you've got lots of tweaking options. You can shoot in RAW or use the manual controls. And despite that added capability, the viewfinder is pretty straightforward. And that includes just getting into it. Double-clicking on the home button is all you need to launch the camera. And even a year after release, it's still quick to launch. If you prefer that physical button as a kind of home base, then you'll prefer the S7 over the S8's newer virtual key, which, by the way, doesn't let you launch the camera. You have to do that with the power key. Also, the older iteration keeps the fingerprint reader in a sensible spot, rather than sticking it alongside the camera like the S8 does. You don't get the newer HDR-enabled displays with the S7s, nor the newest version of protective Gorilla Glass, but these screens are still among the best you can put in your hand, with striking color and contrast that the software takes excellent advantage of. The screens are powered by a battery that, in the larger version at least, is actually slightly bigger than what the S8 is packing, and it's capable of the same wireless charging and fast charging combo that'll keep you happy at Starbucks and at home. So why spill the coin on the S8 instead of sticking to the 7? Well, just generally speaking, newer phones will almost always be supported with software updates for longer. While the S7 did get an update to Android Nougat, it just arrived recently. So recently that it hasn't even come to all of my review devices yet. And even then, the sheer mass of customizations that Samsung slathers onto Android does tend to make these phones bog down a little bit more than their contemporaries over time. Now, like the old saying goes, it happens to a lot of phones. And it's not as bad as it used to be. But there's no denying that there is a software slowdown after a year of usage. Other shortcomings are less nebulous. A micro USB port means your power cord is more finicky to plug in, and it'll be harder and harder to find those older cables as more phones switch to USB-C. An older Bluetooth version makes the S7 less future-proof than the S8 for wireless headphones. The S7's 5-megapixel front-facing camera is still good, but the newer 8-megapixel camera with autofocus and face tracking is bound to make the S8 the better selfie machine. And while we're back on cameras, it's come to light that Samsung is in fact using a newer sensor for the S8's main camera. Samsung is no doubt still tweaking software to work with the phone's new cutting-edge processor. Speaking of which, if you want bleeding-edge silicon or the newest, most buzzworthy features like Bixby or Dex, you should not get the S7. <laughs> that should come as no surprise. All that boils down to a conclusion that seems obvious. The S7 is still a killer phone, and once the S8 drops, you'll be able to get the 7 for an even lower price than you currently can. And that's great. But, and this advice is meant more for normals than nerds, if what you really want is an affordable smartphone, and you don't really care about getting the S7 specifically, 
There are a few newer options out there that hit some or most of the high points the S7 does for less money. Obviously, I'm speaking in generalities, and it's not to say the S7 isn't a good option, because it is. It's actually a great one. It's held up very well compared to a lot of the phones out there. All I'm saying is to keep in mind that it's not your only option if the S8 is just too pricey for you. To save money on your phone's service as well as your phone, check out today's sponsor. Go to mintsim.com, pick a 6- or 12-month plan, and use discount code MrMobile20. You'll get unlimited talk and text and 10 gigs of LTE per month for between $20 and $35 per month. MintSim, premium quality service on a premium quality network for a fraction of the price. For more videos just like this, please subscribe to Mr. Mobile on YouTube. Until next time, thanks for watching and stay mobile, my friends.